From the left coast to your living room, we'll show you how Hollywood is pushing its politics right into your home. Welcome to the 700 Club. When I was running for president, uh, it was cold when they did the first debate. There was snow on the ground. Here in the middle of summer, they're having a debate in New Hampshire. That happened to me, too, when I ran. It it's did. a joke. <laughs> Keep going, Pat. <back. laughs> I mean, snow is much better. But anyhow, seven Republican presidential candidates took to the stage last night in New Hampshire, debating everything from the economy to abortion to Sharia law. Well, our very own David Brody was there, and he actually has this look at what the candidates had to say. Get on the, line here. the night began with a bang as Congresswoman Michelle Bachman grabbed the spotlight. I filed today my paperwork to seek the office of the presidency of the United States. Bachman joined six others in the debate, but the main target wasn't on stage. He was in the White House. The Obama administration is an anti-jobs, anti-business, anti-American energy, destructive force. And as for President Obama's health care law? I will not rest until I repeal Obamacare. It's a promise. Take it to the bank, cash the check. Bachman's announcement and Take Charge performance caught the attention of mainstream media types. She is the one candidate, as we've seen, and, and you've seen it as you've been out, um, who excites conservative audiences in ways that some of the other um, sort of established candidates do not. As for that issue of health care, Mitt Romney found himself defending the plan that he presided over as governor of Massachusetts. It required all individuals to purchase health insurance, something that has been compared to Obama's new health care law. Ours was a state plan, a state solution. Tim Pawlenty recently labeled the Massachusetts plan Obamnicare. Using the term Obamnicare was a reflection of the president's comments that he designed Obamacare on the Massachusetts health care plan. As for the big issue of entitlements, the candidates agreed something must be done. Medicare is going to be cut starting in 2014 by the federal government. While the economy is the number one voter concern, social issues like faith in the public square attracted a lot of attention. Congress should never prohibit the expression of your Christian faith in a public place. On the topic of Islam, Herman Cain had to explain a past statement that he may not be comfortable choosing Muslims to work in his administration. I would not be comfortable because you have peaceful Muslims and then you have militant Muslims, those that are trying to kill us. He got a defender in Newt Gingrich. If you're not prepared to be loyal to the United States, you will not serve in my administration, period. What about radical Islamic Sharia law being applied as a defense in American courtrooms? I do not believe in Sharia law in American courts. We're not going to have Sharia law applied in U.S. courts. That's never going to happen. On the life issue, Rick Santorum took on the question whether Romney's change from pro-choice to pro-life was believable. I think an issue should be in looking at any candidate is looking at the authenticity of that candidate and looking at their at their record over time and what they fought for. People have had a chance to look at my record. I believe people understand that I'm firmly pro-life. The GOP candidates are going to do all of this again in just a couple of months out in Iowa. That Republican field at that time could look a lot different. Rudy Giuliani may be in. Governor Rick Perry of Texas may be in as well. And of course, John Huntsman, the former governor of Utah, will definitely be in by that time. And so the economy and the GOP field very much the same in a state of flux. David Brody, CBN News in Manchester, New Hampshire. Still too early. It's hot. But anyhow, it's better to be in New Hampshire in the heat than in the New Hampshire in the snow because it gets snowy and it gets cold. I recall one place up there, it was minus 20 degrees uh, in an early morning, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, uh, New Hampshire, it's, it's an interesting state, but I don't think it has the clout it used to have. It used to be very, very determinative. But Mitt Romney, it's, it's make or break with him. He's got to win New Hampshire. And if he doesn't or doesn't win it handily, it's going to be looked as a pun that he's, he's faltered. I think he skipped the Ames straw ballot in Iowa, which is a smart move. He won it by spending, he spent a million, two million dollars last time around. It was a waste of money. 
But uh, anyhow, you can keep up with the latest from David Brody on the presidential race by checking out the Brody file on CBNNews.com. Well, let's go to Lee Webb with more of the rest of our news. Lee? Pat, President Obama reaffirms his focus on job creation during a trip to North Carolina. That battleground state has an unemployment rate of 9.7 percent. Mr. Obama went there Monday to lay out plans to jumpstart job growth. The president also met with members of his job council, including top CEOs. You saw Jeffrey Emmert, uh, Emmert there of uh, GE. The president argues that the current economic challenges didn't happen overnight, and it could take a while to get the country back to where it needs to be. Jobs were being created. They were not being created fast enough. Republicans counter by saying that the White House doesn't have people with ideas to create private sector jobs. It's interesting, uh, Pat, that President Obama also said that uh, those shovel-ready projects weren't quite as shovel-ready as they had hoped they would be. It sounded so nice. Well, we're going to put money into shovel-ready projects. Well, they didn't have any shovel-ready projects. I mean, it's, again, smoke and mirrors. Ladies and gentlemen, the American people are saying we want reality. We want jobs. We want to go to work. We want the economy to move. And it's not moving. Well, Lee, let's go on with more uh, politics. Right, Texas governor and potential Republican presidential candidate Rick Perry is organizing a national prayer rally. That day-long prayer and fasting event is called The Response, scheduled for August 6th in Houston. Governor Perry says Americans must call on Jesus to guide them through these, quote, unprecedented struggles. Governors across the country are invited to participate in the prayer rally. Some criticize the event, though, saying Perry should not use his office to promote a religious gathering. North Korea may have succeeded in creating a miniature nuclear device. That's according to South Korea's defense minister. If true, the new technology could allow North Korea to place an atomic warhead on a rocket. The defense minister says the North has had time to succeed in miniaturization, but he didn't offer any evidence to back up his claims. North Korea tried to detonate nuclear devices in 2006 and 2009, but patent weapons experts don't consider either of those attempts a success. Well, Lee, the thing that they've got is those incredible uh, missiles. They've got that Typo Dong 2 missile, which uh, uh, has the potential to reach the west coast of the United States one, I gather. I mean, it's a tremendous weapon. And if they put a, a nuclear warhead, even a small bomb on that thing, it could cause untold damage. And uh, it's a rogue state. Sooner or later, the nations of the world need to move against it. It's, it's, it's like a, a prison. Uh, the poor people of uh, North Korea have suffered. They're stunted in their growth. They're, they literally are shorter than their counterparts in the South. They're, they weigh less because they don't get, have enough food to eat. It's a terrible mess. And that uh, <clears throat> little uh, chubby dictator who runs the country brings in prostitutes and brings in uh, imported wine and brings in all kinds of uh, delicacies while his people are starving. It's, it's, a, it's an absolute scandal. Lee? In Great Britain, even very young children are dealing with obesity. The London Telegraph reports that hundreds of children under the age of three have been admitted to British hospitals to be treated for obesity-related diseases that normally don't appear until later in life. Two children ages six and eight have even suffered strokes that were apparently related to their weight. Some of the children have had gastric surgery, and one doctor says there are many more obese children who aren't receiving treatment. And doctors say many of them are being fed a diet of junk food. Pat? Well, it used to be the shipping fish and chips at the Wimpies and all the various other places in uh, London were not too unhealthy. Now, one woman apparently was chopping up chips, which are French fries, yeah. a lot of sauce, okay. chopping them up and put them in the baby cereal, a uh, year-old baby. Listen, I've heard of worse. I've actually heard of what? people putting soda in baby bottles. Like little baby bottles, and they'll put, like, you know, soda in the baby bottles where there should be milk or water. Well, they're doing it, and the and Brits the are paying the price. You know, I don't know where we get all these stories about England, but, boy, we sure get a passel of them. That breaks your heart. One more time. It breaks time. my heart. England's right. a good place. We like them. I like well, it, yeah. I we like do. It. Well, in the TV business, we're used to saying, you know, things like, don't change the channel. Well, up next, we're actually going to tell you times when you should. Like when your favorite TV shows are actually brainwashing you. We're going to explain up next. 
Plus, later on the 700 Club, bring it online with our questions from Pat. Guess what? They're going to be live. So what do we want you to do? Don't change the channel. <laughs> Coming up, we go fishing for the perfect seafood dish. My name is Roger Stump, and I'm a cancer survivor. The surgeon said it's inoperable. It's already in your liver. My wife, Brenda, sat there and cried. And I'm thinking, I can't die right now. I'm only 52 years old. I was so distraught. I've heard Cancer Treatment Centers of America had experience with pancreatic cancers. It was like night and day. The hospital just breeds an environment of hope. You'd get a CT scan, and the next morning, the results were read to you. We'd go up there. I just knew it was going to be a good result. You could just see the joy on Dr. Granick's face. Call now and we'll show you how the most compassionate people anywhere put you at the center of everything we do. Together, we'll explore real treatment options you may not even know exist. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is such a different place because they give you hope. I would strongly urge you to call them and, and get a second opinion. Please call today. Tomorrow. A former pro makes a major league confession. I'd smoke a couple joints and then drink a couple beers. And if the cocaine was available, I, I would probably do cocaine from morning to night. Plus, the guaranteed secret of success. Nothing is impossible. Learn about the law of unity. If you can get together, there's nothing you can't accomplish. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. A new book blows the lid off of Hollywood's open secret. It's called Prime Time Propaganda, and it shows how Hollywood executives, writers, and producers have used their influence to promote a liberal agenda. But there are a lot of people who really are, have medieval minds uh, in all sorts of ways, who um, aren't open to anything new, uh, aren't open to anything reasonable. That was Susan Harris being interviewed by author Ben Shapiro for his book Primetime Propaganda. She's the creator of popular TV shows like Soap and Golden Girls. Leonard Goldberg, creator of hits like Charlie's Angels and Blue Bloods, says he's a moderate but recognizes the problem. He notes that the late Ron Silver's career suffered after he became a Republican. Brilliant actor. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. He felt very strongly that his opportunities were limited because of his outspoken feeling about his views. Friends creator Marta Kaufman says all of this is no secret. We all come from a certain place. Um, we're going to put out there what we believe because right. these characters mirror who we are. Plugged in online's Bob Walashevsky says there's not a lot of openness on the left. Shapiro points out it needs to change, and I agree. He's like, come on, folks, in the Hollywood and TV industry, at least hire some people in some projects that are different than you, uh, who are open to traditional values. How wrong is that? And I want to say, <laughs> amen, preach it. Well, joining us from Washington is the author of a book called Prime Time Propaganda, Ben Shiro Shapiro. Ben, nice to have you with us. Hey, it's an honor. Courtney, in your book, you had a screenplay for an episode of one of the well-known uh, serials that's on the prime time. And what does your agent finally tell you about it? Oh, well, essentially, my agent called me back three weeks after we had met, and he said, I, I'm not sure we can represent you. We got your stuff around town, um, and somebody Googled you, and they found your website. I've been openly conservative for 10, 12 years, uh, and, you know, we can't hire you. Nobody, nobody in town is going to hire you based on your conservative values. What is conservative? Is it having to do with economics? Is it having to do with social issues? Is it having to do with uh, war and peace? What, what is it? You know, it's all of the above. The one that's really killer right now is social issues. If you're, if you're a religious conservative, if you're a social issues conservative, if you're anti-abortion, specifically if you're anti-gay marriage, if you were pro-Prop 8 in California, you will not work. I mean, that really is the bright line issue. You can actually be anti-high tax. You can actually be pro-war a little bit at this point, but you cannot be anti-gay marriage. If you're anti-gay marriage in Hollywood, you will not get a job. It's that simple. But whatever happened, I mean, uh, you know, the American people overwhelmingly vote for 
traditional marriage between a man and a woman. What is it with Hollywood? And I mean, they're inserting gays one after other. As a matter of fact, straight actors are being forced to play gay roles. Yeah, well, I, I think that in Hollywood, they tend to reflect their own lives. It's so funny. When you ask people in Hollywood, is the stuff that you're producing reflecting America or transforming America? You know, those of us who don't believe in liberal values say, obviously, it's transforming America. But the people who make TV say, no, 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 it's reflecting America because they're so insular. They're so insulated. They live in such an echo chamber that they truly believe that they are reflecting all of America when, in fact, they're really reflecting only their portion of America, which is a very liberal portion of America. In reality, they're reflecting their own lives. They're transforming everybody else's. They just don't see it that way. You know, CBS had the ratings some years ago with uh, things like Green Acres and the Beverly Hillbillies and all those shows that were uh, sort of middle America, country, corn pone, yep. whatever. I understand, uh, according to your book, CBS just slashed the whole group of them, just cut them out. What, what, that takes a lot of courage, or maybe it's not courage. Maybe it's arrogance. Well, I, I think that what, what really happened there, I mean, it's really fascinating. This is the reason that TV is liberal today. It's because in the late 1960s, exactly as you mentioned, CBS had all these winning shows, Beverly Hillbillies, Green Acres, Petticoat Junction. They dumped all of those in favor of shows like MASH, All in the Family, and Mary Tyler Moore, specifically because there was a scam that was perpetrated on the advertising community. And now, you know, look, if, if the left didn't make any money off what they were doing, Hollywood wouldn't, wouldn't be successful. It is successful, but it's successful based on what is basically a con job, which is that people 18 to 49 are working worth more than people who are 50 and above, right? That's, that, that's why whenever you look at Nielsen ratings, they say, well, here's the rating, then here's the real rating, the 18 to 49 rating. Now, if you think about that for half a second, you realize that makes no sense. Why should it be that people 18 to 49 are worth more? They have no disposable income. They have no savings. They're still working. They're not retired. So why, why would you target those people if you're advertisers? The answer is TV lies to the advertising agencies. And this started in the early 1970s. And that's what really prompted the shift. So it was executives who wanted to be liberal who wanted to program liberal, who looked at that and they said, okay, let's target young audiences because then we can say with, with, a, with a certain amount of certitude that liberal people want our programs because young people tend to be more liberal. Well, you know, the, the network executives, these are supposed to be businessmen. They're supposed to be trying to make a profit for their shareholders. How do they get conned? You know, Pat, it's unbelievable. Even the executives are really interested in pushing a social agenda. I spoke with Doug Herzog, who's the head of MTV Networks, right, which is the parent company mm -hmm. for both MTV and Comedy Central. He said, absolutely, we pursue social justice when we make our shows. I spoke with Barbara, you know, Barbara Fisher, who's the VP of Original Programming at Hallmark Channel. She said, look, you're going to get treated differently in this business if you wear a, if you wear a McCain t-shirt than if you wear an Obama t-shirt. The fact is that even the executives across the spectrum in Hollywood are interested not just in making money, not just in bringing in ratings, but in something a little bit deeper, in bringing a social value to what they're doing. They have to, listen, they have to, they have to wake up in the morning and feel good about themselves and the problem for them is that for a lot of them, they're socialists. I mean, you live, you live in these palatial estates off Sunset Boulevard and you make a lot of money. And how do you justify that to yourself when really you believe that all wealth belongs to the people and should be redistributed accordingly? Well, the way that you do that is by slapping America in the face. It's by saying, at least we're fighting the system. Sure, we're earning big bucks, but we're fighting the system. And so they get some sort of satisfaction out of doing this sort of thing. You know, you pointed out, and rightly so, that these guys are uh, brilliant. They, they, they're very clever. Their, their stuff is quite funny, and they put these things out there. And if the messages are there, they're, they're tucked in kind of subtly, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, if it weren't good, it wouldn't work. I think that this is really the key. This is why I think conservatives need to start understanding the power of narrative. Look, the Bible, Old and New Testament, it's all based on narrative, on parables. God understands that you really have to base things rooted in the human story because that's what, that, that's what converts people. And that's what people in Hollywood do. They, they create a set of characters who you spend more time with in many cases than your own family, unfortunately. You know, the people who are funny and witty and who you really want to spend hours on end with. And then they take those people and they have them pursue behaviors that really don't agree and don't accord with your personal values. And it makes it very difficult for you to then disown those values, right? It's the same argument that advocates of gay marriage make. The, the usual argument that they make is you cannot be anti-gay marriage if there's a gay person in your family. Well, logically, there's no connection there. Why can't I be anti-gay marriage if there's a gay person in my family? Of course I can. But it's an emotional argument mm -hmm. that has emotional weight. And they do the same thing in Hollywood. They create characters, friends for you, family members for you. And then they have those people, you know, be gay or be single mothers or pursue lifestyle choices that with which you wouldn't agree. And it makes it makes it difficult for you to say, OK, you know what? I'm anti-gay marriage, but I like watching Will and Grace. <laughs> well, you remember the flack about uh, Murphy Brown and she Dan was going to yep. have a baby out of wedlock and so forth. 
Well, what's the deal with that? I mean, you know. It, it's really funny. You know, I, I, I was going to interview Diane English. I mean, this shows how insular people in Hollywood are. The ones who did Google me, right, and found out that I was a conservative wouldn't do interviews like Diane English and Murphy Brown. Dan Quayle was right on the money when he said, look, it's a problem that Murphy Brown is pushing single motherhood. Of course it's a problem. And in fact, Candace Bergen, who played Murphy Brown, 10 years later came out and said, you know what? He was right. The fact is, of course he was right. But Hollywood does this sort of stuff on purpose. Yeah. They see it as their mission to convert the rest of us. It, it, they, it, it's so funny. For a group of people who are anti-colonialism, anti-imperialism, these are the single greatest set of cultural imperialists in world history. <laughs> the book, ladies and gentlemen, is called Primetime Propaganda. You have done a tr an exhaustive study. You've talked to all kinds of people in the industry, many, many shows, things that you're familiar with. And ladies and gentlemen, Ben Shapiro's book. Where's your book? Is it everywhere? And can we It's everywhere. Yep, Amazon, your local bookstore. Are you doing well with it? Is it so? Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing great. And you know what? I would also encourage conservatives, please get involved in the entertainment industry. We need to understand it's not just about the politics. It's about the entertainment that shapes us. Let's get involved in narrative. Let's hone our skills. And yeah, let's use our money and our resources to start getting into it. Look, the left has done it for years. It's time for us to look at them and imitate them and take our culture back. All right, we'll take that advice from Ben Shapiro, Primetime Propaganda. You want to get a copy of it. Well, for a sneak peek at the book log on CBN, you can look at it at uh, CBN.com. And Christy is now outside. It's a beautiful day here in Tidewater, Virginia, and she's going to teach us how to cook something. I don't know what you're cooking. who is and as you said pat we are outside because we've got bigger fish to fry up next chef barton siever that's him he's going to show us seafood that's both tasty and check this out echo friendly who knew you ready i am all right Let's go. <laughs> What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened, in Israel. Come sail the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus calmed a raging storm. Experience Jerusalem, where Jesus restored a paralyzed man. Explore Capernaum, where Jesus spoke a centurion servant into health. To learn more about standing where it all happened, in Israel, visit GoIsrael.com. Come visit Israel. When Jim's mobility became so restricted, I could help him with a lot of things. But what I couldn't help him regain was his dignity. He wanted to be able to do everything himself, like getting in and out of the bathtub. That's when Jim's physical therapist suggested a premier care walk-in bath. Imagine being able to walk right into a tub, sit down, and enjoy a full soak bath without the worry of getting out. That's the safety and freedom that a Premier Care walk-in bath provides. And our exclusive hydrovescent therapy improves circulation and eases aches and pains. In fact, Premier Care is the first walk-in bath and shower company to pass stringent testing requirements to receive the Arthritis Foundation's prestigious Ease of Use Commendation. Both baths and showers are available to fit most any mobility need and available space. Choose the walk-in baths and showers commended by the Arthritis Foundation. Choose Premier Care and Bathing for your free information kit call 800-606-6117 now to listen to our top songs of the week go to cbn radio at cbn.com okay so chef barton siever he knows that there are plenty of fish in the sea we've all heard that one right well one restaurant of his actually serves more than 75 different seafoods can you believe that and what separates Barton from many other chefs is that he wants to make sure that there are even more fish in the sea for years to come. Hi, I'm Barton Seaver, chef and National Geographic Fellow. Chef Barton Seaver is making an impact in the kitchen and on the environment. He began his career as a chef in top DC area restaurants, and today he hosts the National Geographic web series, CookWise, where he explores environmental concerns as they relate to your dinner. It's not all aquaculture is the same. In his new book, For Cod and Country, Barton sheds light on seafood sustainability. And he also offers delicious, healthful meals to satisfy the body while ensuring your favorite seafood will be around to enjoy for generations to come. So please welcome to the 700 Club, Chef Barton Seaver. Thank you so much for being hey, here. Hey, good morning. That's a real pleasure. What a beautiful day. I too. know. We couldn't have 
This you know, plan this if we tried. Yeah. Well, you know what? You've always kind of been a seafood lover, but mm -hmm. it all kind of started when you were younger with your dad on a Absolutely. fishing excursion. Tell me, tell us all about that. Well, you know, I came to food. It's a fluency that I had because dinner was such a huge part of our family. In fact, it yeah. was where we became a family. Yeah. And everybody had a place to give, to share, to receive, to to really be part of a group. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when I when I was out of college and looking for something to to some structure in my life. Food was right there, mm. and I remember the just the glorious meals that my parents cooked, and they were intrepid cooks yeah. and great cooks too. But really, my father's specialty was seafood, mm. and just all the tastes and the textures and the palate, all the the delicious differences that we have in yeah. seafood, really make it so much fun to cook. I love seafood, especially being here in Virginia Beach. I mean, Absolutely. we've got a plethora of it. Absolutely. So let's talk about today. What do you have for us so that we can start rocking our stuff and eat something? Sure. Well, one of the things that we're hearing so much about are omega-3 fatty acids yeah. now. And yeah. how beneficial they are, the cardioprotective mm -hmm. benefits as well as the developmental benefits yeah. for uh, pregnant nursing mothers. Yeah. One of the greatest options that we have is canned pink salmon. Huh. Uh, literally, uh, canned pink salmon cakes, one of my favorite recipes from the book. This easy, it's a can of salmon, comes right. right out of the bowl or just like it. that. A little bit of lemon juice, some dill. Dill is one of my favorite ingredients yeah. for uh, just that cool, crisp taste that it has. Yeah. It really draws out the... the I love dill. Oh, yeah. so good. It does. A little bit of mustard, uh, mayonnaise to bind it all together, and uh, a little bit of breadcrumbs. And really, this whole dish is just that easy. It and you really mix is. it together. Another one of my favorites, a uh, little flavoring here, ground mace. Really? I never use mace. It's the uh, the lacy covering of a nutmeg seed. Okay. And it's got just a wonderful aroma to it that's uh, at once that oh, sweet, soft. It smells like nutmeg. That sweet, soft yeah. smell of nutmeg, but yeah. a little more angular, almost yeah. uh, sort of acidic in a way that okay. just adds a real savory bun uh, punch to it. Yeah. So a little bit of that, and then just mix this up with your hands, mm -hmm. and, and you get these wonderful cakes here, just like this. I love it. And one of the best options is that you know, for a family of four, mm -hmm. for four less than four dollars, you can feed people delicious, heart healthy meals. Well, see, here's my question. So since you did, what was that canned salmon that you were yep. talking about? Absolutely. Instantly, my brain went to tuna. Can we do canned tuna and use that same recipe, or yeah, no? Does it absolutely. not? Absolutely, uh, especially a canned American albacore or an albacore uh, American skipjack. Yeah. You know, supporting American fisheries yeah. is a great idea. Some of the best run fisheries in the world, ec uh, ecologically, as well as supporting American jobs. Well, you know, one of the things we talk about when we talk about food, especially let's say our vegetables or gardening, is that you eat in season. Meaning, absolutely. whatever is in season, that's what you eat. But you kind of have that same concept for fish, right? Sort of. It's something that we <laughs> sort of kind of. Yeah, sort of. It's something that we've lost. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't think of seafood seasonally anymore yeah. because, well, frankly, things like canned salmon, canned tuna sort of betray our seasonality and run concurrent with all years. Sure. Uh, however, there's things like, you know, especially here in Virginia Beach, the shad runs, the bluefish, the mm -hmm. striped bass that are so famous on this coast, the yeah. crabs, the soft shells that really just ebullient examples yeah. of a season, yeah. of a time and a place and, oh, that first <laughs> soft shell of the year, it's such an exciting time. Time. And you saute them up and, and you gather your family around. Is that on? I think so. We might have gotten blown out here. Well, so it's all good. With, oh, with the uh, danger out, of blowing blamed. myself up here and you too. There so you go. Now, now it's there going. We go. So while that continues to cook, let's go over here. Okay. What are we doing here? Uh, this is some king salmon. Now right. Alaska has some of the very best managed fisheries in the world. In fact, they're really an example of what can be people working in harmony with nature to provide for our needs, provide for the needs of our children, mm -hmm. ensuring these stocks will be around forever. Exactly. Uh, but also, you know, good American jobs, heart healthy fish, uh, some of it very economical like canned pink salmon, some of it more luxurious like king salmon. And sure. this can run, you know, very expensive, but oh, it's the fatty delicious. richness of it is so well, you know, worth it. Well, you got a question for you. Which is better, farm raised fish or wild caught fish? Well, you know, it like everything in, in the world. You yeah. can't sort of label it good or bad. Uh, and so it, it, some aquaculture, as yeah. it's called, is, is very good, such as the farm-raised oysters, clams, and mussels. Those are actually restorative yeah. in their nature, giving back to the ecologies that they come from. Sure. And then, however, there's some species, such as uh, some farm salmon, are not quite as good. Gotcha. All right, we have a brine right here. So first yeah. of all, as I pour this over the salmon, uh -huh. you're going to tell us what a brine is. Well, a brine is, uh, in this case, we're going to be hot smoking this salmon, mm -hmm. so gently flavoring it as it slowly roasts in a, a warm environment infused with smoke. Brine is a salt and sugar mixture yeah. that uh, helps. Did you see I just brined my foot? I did. Oh, I did. yeah, good. <laughs> 
It helps with the nail polish. So I'll I explain know, why. Right? Uh, salt and sugar uh, season the fish yeah. all the way throughout, and so it really adds taste and texture, and thus uh, making it more moist and, mm. and delicious all the way through. And in this particular brine for smoking, yeah. which is a little bit uh, saltier, we have a little bit of onion powder, garlic powder, salt, sugar, and a little bit of lemon juice okay. mixed with a little bit of water. And, and, and there, there you, you have go. it. Well, here's the question. Now I stopped, but when you brine, do you cover the entire fish? Yeah. Is there a particular time frame? Do you leave it overnight? You can you just have it for a couple hours? You know, in the book, I talk about this in, in terms of the different time ratios. Uh, something like salmon that's fatty, it's rich, it's already moist, would probably brine for maybe half an hour or so, 45 right. minutes, and then let it dry overnight. Huh. And what happens is the salt draws out some proteins. Yeah. And as they dry out overnight, they become really sticky. And, and, and so hmm. that's what the smoke adheres to. And that's where well, you get speaking that. Speaking of smoke. Yeah. And that's where you get that beautiful <laughs> rust you know, beautiful sunset color to them. Yeah. And, and just look at this. So this is a smoker. Yeah. Oh, look at that you fish. See that? I hope we're doing somebody's close up over here. Do you here. like that reveal? I Let's love, the reveal. love the, the reveal. Love the smoke, love the reveal, love the smell. So you can see here, we're cooking at only about 200 degrees. Yeah. Just a little bit under. All right. So long, slow, smoldering, flavorful cooking. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Good stuff. I, I don't know what it is, but when you do that, <laughs> I, it's, I just love it. It makes me happy. It's my morning food joy. It is. So it's a great joy. And you get that fatty richness of the fish and that light color to it. That and looks it's just delicious. Absolutely beautiful. How long has this been cooking? This has been on for about half an hour now. Is that so normal? It, yeah. Okay. And so we'll let it dry out a little bit more. All right. Do we'll, we need to flip that? Yeah. We'll flip our cakes here. All right. So as we flip and as we look, can we eat? We is that can. tacky? <laughs> no, no. So we're a little bit behind on this because we put them in. Uh, the wind here, the glorious wind and blown it's out. That's TV. That's so. yeah, TV. Exactly. So, what do we so. have here? Is this the same thing that would come out of the smoker? What is this? Is this the well, finished yeah, product? This is uh, a finished product. This has been smoked for a longer time. This right. is the. This is the tail end of the fish, mm -hmm. and so you can see it picks up that rust color. It's yeah. beautiful. And then we have another uh, pink salmon application here, which is pink salmon, a little bit of basil, mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit of chopped fennel. Mm -hmm. Real quick salad. And talk about a summer feast. Yeah, yeah. The kids are coming home from yeah. lunch, they're back from the pool, and you're running around crazy. Mm -hmm. you run out to the garden, just pick a, a few sprigs of basil, mm -hmm. open up a can of salmon, chop up some fennel, done. Now, can you eat it cold? I know that's a stupid Absolutely. question, but I wasn't sure. Absolutely. All right. I mean, that's that's one of the joys of, of seafood, sardines straight yeah. out of the can, one of the best things we can eat for ourselves. Exactly. And salmon in all forms is, is great. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to take a bite, and I want you to give the audience that one last tip that if there's anything that you've learned over the years when it comes to just <laughs> fish, what's the one thing you want them to know well, as I, I eat? <laughs> I'd say that... Uh, 90% of good fish cooking is buying good fish. Ooh, that's and so good. the best way to thanks. The best <laughs> way to do that I'd say is to go introduce yourself mm -hmm. to the man or the woman behind the fish counter and say, "Hey, what do you got that's best, freshest and most delightful today? Most economical and fits my wallet?" Mm -hmm. And you know what? Having that personal relationship, just the you know, just the, the whole art of eating is about mm -hmm. relationships and, and bringing the family together. And so, if we extend that relationship mm -hmm. to where we buy our produce from, mm -hmm. buy our fish from, it just makes the whole process better. I tell you what, Barb. God bless you because <laughs> here's the deal. <laughs> Well, God bless salmon, too. I can't stop eating. So for more great recipes, check out Barton Seaver's book. It's called For Cod and Country. Love the twist on name. And it's available in stores nationwide. So, um, oh, there go. <laughs> I forgot to hold up the book. That's what's really important. I'm just talking about the book. Oh, can I say this really quick and then I'll go. This book is beautiful. I was looking at this earlier and he was saying that his wife helped design it. Stunning. Here we go. The book again, For God and for God. God. Cod. For cod and country. <laughs> For cod and country. <laughs> All right, just buy the book. It's easier if you read it than me saying it. Barton, thank you so oh, much for being you. here. I appreciate you. I look forward to sharing a meal together. Absolutely. With you. That was really good. Yeah. All right, Pat, I'm throwing it to you. That's great. I understand the cods have been fished out. There are hardly any of them left. And that is a dangerous thing for cod and country. And uh, boy, that looked good. I want to say something about my dog, Blue. Blue loves vitamins. He loves fish oil. And when I start taking vitamins, Blue just stands beside me and he just goes nuts. He begins to whimper and cry. And then when I give him a fish oil pill, he's happy. So the dog knows omega-3 fish oil. <laughs> well, we're going to switch from cod to a porn addict. He's on the verge of a mental breakdown. 
He sat down and he asked me a thousand questions with his chart. And he said, Eric, I think as your doctor that you're going crazy. Hear how he silenced the voices in his head coming up next. Obamacare is not only going to ruin our health care system, but it's going to put us so far in debt we will never recover. Perhaps worst of all, it was concocted in an undemocratic process. In locked rooms in the middle of the night, Obamacare was passed and rammed down the throats of the American people. In January, after we delivered petitions to the House, they voted to repeal. Now the Senate is only four votes short of repeal as well. It's critical that you call today and add your voice to the new U.S. Senate petition. Even if you've signed a petition or made a call, do it again and ask your friends to do it again. We don't want them to ever think that we're giving up so that they can give up. Call 1-800-899-5051 or go online to repealitnow.org to sign the official petition. Together, we can force Washington to repeal this costly and destructive law. Call 1-800-899-5051. Welcome to Washington for this CBN News Break. In New York, it's down to the wire for same-sex marriage. With just days left in the current legislative session, attention is focused on four undecided Republican senators. All other senators either have committed with 29 supporting same-sex marriage or 29 opposed. The New York State Assembly has already voted in favor of it. Governor Andrew Cuomo and Mayor Michael Bloomberg have publicly campaigned to legalize gay marriage. At a press conference Monday, the governor used his influence to make a last-minute push. This is an issue of social justice, in my opinion. This is an issue of social progress. Uh, and the Democratic Party has always stood firmly on the side of social progress and rooting out injustice. Christian clergy leaders in New York hold a rally on the steps of City Hall today to try to head off efforts to legalize same marriage. We'll have more on this story on tomorrow's 700 Club. Harold Camping is in the hospital recovering from a mild stroke. Last month, Camping predicted that the rapture would occur and all true Christians would be taken from the earth. When nothing happened, Camping said that it was actually a spiritual judgment day. His new prediction is that the world will end on October 21st. You can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Christy will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. Why are some people selling their gold and buying silver? Because all the silver mined in the past 200 years has been used up by industry and is gone. That's right. Silver has become rarer than gold, but it sells for a fraction of the price. Scores of industries must have silver to make their products. Its uses are so varied, silver has been called a miracle metal. The Chinese recently made it legal for its citizens to own silver. That's just one reason investment demand for silver is going through the roof. Investment Rarities Incorporated has been helping clients preserve wealth with silver and gold for over 35 years. They have delivered over $2 billion in coins and bullion to their customers. And unlike other companies who only sell you a certificate of ownership, Investment Rarities ships your silver right to your door. Call Investment Rarities now at 1-800-328-1860 for your free books and reports about silver. Learn how transferring just 10% of your assets into silver could be a good move. Call now. For years, Eric Bledsoe was at war with his own mind. He wanted to get clean. He wanted to fight his addiction. And yet the more Eric fought, the worse he got. And the fight was driving him crazy. I woke up in the middle of the night, and I'm not a weird guy. But I swear to you, it's, it was like almost audibly like taunting me. Eric Bledsoe was held captive by pornography. He sat home alone day after day. When you're alone with your thoughts sitting on the couch, it's awful. 
I felt and knew that something was so broken and so wrong in my heart. He grew up in church and accepted Christ when he was six years old, but walked away after a humiliating conflict with Christian leaders during college. I became very hurt and very uh, bitter. I chose to run towards um, whatever would take me in. Eric dropped out of school and eventually moved to Nashville to pursue a music career. Alone in a new city, Eric turned to pornography for comfort. I just didn't want anything or anyone, and this was the only thing that I could turn to, I thought. Pornography was a great narcotic because it was whatever I wanted it to be. It lies to you that it will fulfill you, and then as soon as you've given yourself to it, it stabs you in the back. He eventually turned to women for companionship and bounced from one promiscuous relationship to the next. I needed intimacy to feel loved, to feel like I was uh, validated as a man, um, to feel in control because my whole life was in a tailspin, um, to feel a, a sense of belonging to anything. He also started going to a strip club. That was my moment of, I am sick. I'm in a strip club, but yet I can't even enjoy it because I'm so overcome with compassion for this person uh, because I want them to be whole, and yet I'm in, the, I'm in the same boat as she is. Eric ran to the only people he could trust, his parents. They didn't know any of the things that I was doing. Got in a huge fight about the purpose and value of my life, and it got so bad that eventually they just said, look, we love you, and we are out of our league here. Uh, you need some help. He went to see a physician whose prescription caught him off guard. He sat down and he asked me a thousand questions with his chart and, and they started off medical and they went more and more personal and psychological at some point. And he said, Eric, the way that you believe and the things that you do are in such contradiction to each other that I think is your doctor that you're going crazy. He said, if I were you, as your medical doctor, not your pastor, I think the best prescription I can write you is for you to go to church. Eric drove home to Nashville and called a friend who just happened to be going to a Christian conference. He invited Eric to go along. I knew that I couldn't say no to the Lord forever. And all of those fears and emotions and shame and guilt are so loud in my head and they are playing like a tape over and over. You need to get out. You should not be here. Wait till they find out what you've done. All of the things, they're going to reject you again. It's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's so loud. He walked forward that night to rededicate his life to Christ. When I set my face to walk down the aisle, it just stops. Me putting my foot in the aisle and walking up front to talk to anybody required absolute surrender because of how far I had been. Eric began studying the Bible and found a man who would mentor him. I was gonna die if I didn't change. And it might not have been the week after, but I was on a path to either take my own life or lose it. And um, just out of sheer depression and loneliness. And the only thing in, that I have ever seen, that I have ever heard work, is when you cultivate such a relationship with Christ that it becomes a greater high than logging onto porn to be chaste and holy unto God. So much so that to sell out uh, for porn is like a joke. I'm practicing renewing my mind, being around men and women of God, trying to listen to the Holy Spirit, being in church, doing the right things. And slowly over time, one thing is replaced for another and eventually it just clicked. Today, Eric is married with a young son. I long to be faithful to my wife now. Why would I give up my home and my marriage and my family for 15 minutes with a computer? I mean, come on. There is a place that is only meant for God. And when we try to take anything that's not God and fill that void in us with it, we also uh, end up more empty and more alone and more depressed. There is a God who sees you, Jesus, who knows the things that you're choosing over Him, the things that you've been a part of, and He is waiting to forgive you for those things. He has decided that He would rather die than live without you. What a time. You're going crazy. Many of you are up against that. You started out in the church. You made a decision when you were a youngster. Maybe you went to youth camp. 
Maybe you were in the uh, youth program in your church, whatever. Maybe in high school, uh, you belonged to one of the clubs that is for born-again Christians. And then all of a sudden, somebody gave you a magazine, or else you flipped on to something on a computer, and that stuff just mesmerized you. It just caught your attention. All of a sudden, here are these women that don't have any clothes on, and they're good-looking women, and they're doing all these suggestive things, and you'd never seen anything quite like that before. And it drew you in. And then you came back again and again, and before long, you were hooked. You see, it's the bait of Satan. Satan wants to destroy you because he hates you. He hates God, and he hates somebody created in the image of God. You were made in God's image. You were made for God. Your delight and joy is only going to be in Him. But Satan wants to kill and to destroy you. And the question is, do you want freedom? Would you like to be free? And if you want freedom right now, you want to break the bonds, I want you to pray, and I want you to ask the Lord to come in and take over. Pray these words. Pray them from your heart. Don't be afraid. Lord God. Pray with me. Lord God, I surrender to you, Lord. I know you created me. I know I belong to you. But I know I have broken your commandments, and I have done that which will dis is displeasing to you. And right now, I'm under a sentence of hell. And I ask you, Lord, please forgive me. Please hear my voice. Please forgive me and set me free. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, I turn to you now. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and as the Lord of my life. And from this moment on, I am yours. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. And thank you for coming into my heart. Now, if you prayed with me just then, the Lord is doing something wonderful in your life. You are free. Don't let the devil tell you you're not. Sure, there'll be temptation along the way. You're not going to die. But there is temptation. I want you to start growing right now in the Lord. I have a little material for you. I have a CD, and I have a, a little book of scriptures. It's called A New Day, and I'll give it to you right now, free. And we also have another book called Trapped in Temptation and How You Can Get Free. So this book that will tell you what the Bible says about pornography and what's happened to you and how you can get free and trapped. God wants you free because he loves you. So call in and say, I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to the Lord. And from this moment on, I am free. Let's give the devil a bad name. The Bible says that Jesus made a show of them openly triumphing in his cross. Make a show of him openly. Pick up your phone and call right now and say, listen, I have accepted the Lord. I have prayed right now. I am free from pornography. I am free. I am free. I am free. And say it. And then say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind your power. And from this moment on, you have no hold over me. Call now, would you please? And let's get you started down the line. It's a toll-free number, 1-800-759-0700. Somebody's here who loves you. 1-800-759-0700. Christy? Thank you so much, Pat. Well, coming up later on the 700 Club, you know throughout the entire program, we've been collecting your questions in our chat room. Well, guess what? Now it's time for some answers. So stay tuned because we're going to bring it online when we come back. Hey, Heather. Wave, Heather. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift. 
a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. Tomorrow, a former pro makes a major league confession. I'd smoke a couple joints and then drink a couple beers. And if the cocaine was available, I, I would probably do cocaine from morning to night. Plus, the guaranteed secret of success. Nothing is impossible. Learn about the law of unity. If you can get together, there's nothing you can't accomplish. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. Well, right now we want to introduce you to a man from Guatemala. He helps feed hundreds of people living on the streets every week, right from his own kitchen. Nearly every week of the year, Giuseppe and his small team prepare soups, sandwiches, and other foods, enough to feed four to 500 people. And they do it all in the small kitchen inside Giuseppe's home. Every Thursday night, he serves that food from the back of his truck, to hundreds of homeless men, women, and children who live in his neighborhood in Guatemala City. I believe God called me to the streets. I give them a meal, but my heart's desire is to share the gospel with them. CBN and Operation Blessing have been supporting Giuseppe with financial help and donated food as he cares for the neediest members of his community, people like Alma and her children. For years, the young family lived on the streets. That was one of the most difficult times of my life, that I had to commit a crime so my children could eat. But because of the kindness shown to her through Giuseppe's ministry, Alma prayed to become a Christian and also found work and a place to live. As the years passed, Giuseppe's vision to reach more homeless people has grown, but not his capacity to make enough meals. That's when CBN offered to help. We purchased a brand new commercial sized stove, as well as a refrigerator, freezer, and other small appliances. Soon, the kitchen was ready to go. Thank you. You have given us this wonderful kitchen. Operation Blessing and CBN are part of this blessing. Giuseppe is a perfect example of the difference that one person can make. He started it, hundreds of people were blessed, and then others came alongside him and partnered with him and look at the difference that he's making in his own community. Do you know that your decision to pick up the phone and partner with us can be that one decision that'll just touch millions of lives? One person can make a difference. Would you like to be that person today and become a 700 Club partner, just like Giuseppe did? Well, if you would, it's just 65 cents a day, $20 a month. That's all it takes to really just change not one lives, but more lives than you could possibly imagine. And listen, I want to encourage you, too, that when you do call to become a 700 Club partner, we want to bless you with this. We've been talking about this for the past couple weeks, and I, and I, I say this, but I say this with just true honesty. This is the best series from my perspective, that CBN has ever done. It's called Life Beyond the Grave. It's living true life testimonies of people who either died and gone to heaven or hell and come back to share their experiences. And I can't tell you, you cannot watch this, this in your life not be changed. So when you become a 700 Club partner, this is our gift to you. And you know, if you also want to increase it to maybe 700 Club gold or even 1000 Club, we give you five of these. You keep one, you give five or give the other four away. So become a 700 Club partner right now. The number's there. And you can always log on to CBN.com as well. Well, you know what time it is, Pat? I think it's time for Bring It On. It's time for Bring It I'm On. You're 100% right. Bring It right. On. I'm excited. All right. All right. So here we go. Teresa just wrote in. She says, I work in a restaurant, and many of my coworkers wear low-cut tops to get better tips from their male clients. I decided to tell my boss, but rather than doing something, he start, she started wearing low-cut tops as well. She said, you don't tempt a man with what you wear. It's what you say to them. What do you, what do I do? You like your job. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's what they do. And I mean, you know, you're going to go into a uh, strip club and tell them not to take their clothes off. I mean, you're working in a restaurant where this enticement goes on. Yeah, but I will say this, and maybe because I'm a woman, for me personally, it annoys me when I go to a restaurant and there's a waitress with a low cut top and she's bending over saying, how many I serve you? I'm like, really, do I want to see all that? You know what I mean? Well, you don't, but the men do. <laughs> well, God bless him. I don't have, I don't know. 
Okay, we're going to go to the next question. I don't know Pat. what to say. So what should you do? I mean, if you I don't, don't like it, get another job. I mean, I don't know what else well, to say. Exactly. Well, I would kind of say the same thing, All Pat. Right. I would say live by your own standards. And if that if that does not represent who you believe you should be, <laughs> then put your clothes on, girl. Don't compromise. No matter where you work, what you do, put your clothes on. Ashley says, I'm watching the show, and I wondered, why do you mix politics with religion? That's a good question. When did the presidential race become a part of the Bible? Um, I want to say this isn't a Bible show. The part of the first 20 minutes of this show is devoted to news of the world. And um, we think that the Christian people are very concerned about what's going on in their world. So we do mix uh, events in the world with biblical prophecy from time to time as it's appropriate. But the, the, the news of the world, I mean, it's not politics so much. I mean, what happens in... In Libya, what happens in uh, the Soviet Union? The fact that we talked today about uh, North Korea having a potential small nuclear device. All these things are important to us. Don't put your head in the sand and say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read the Bible and be holy. I mean, I think God wants us to be uh, informed. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And we believe that the Christian people should be as informed as any other group in the world. Right. I totally agree. Okay. Absolutely. Tasha says, I have an old friend, but my husband is not too fond of him. He wants me to stop seeing him and to stop talking to him. Should I listen to my husband or in my friendship? Pat, what do you think? Listen to your husband. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, she's, she's carrying on this thing with this man, and her husband says, I, you know, A, I'm jealous, I don't like it, and I'm afraid of what it might do to you and what it might do to our marriage. Listen to him. God's given him a role in your life, and, uh, you know, go ahead. He's the high priest of the family, supposedly. You know what, Pat? I agree with you. I can't believe it. I know. Hell oh. has frozen over. Mark up Hell. one. <laughs> All right. A new no. day is gone. A new day. The millennium. All right, I know. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. All right. Martha says, I live on Social Security, and I have inflation-indexed I-bonds. Did I say that right, Pat? Yeah, you did. Anyway, they are paying well now, but I cannot afford to lose any money. Is my money safe, or should I sell them? Good grief. I, um, I tell you, here's the deal, Martha. And I don't want to get too complicated, but the United States dollar is being slowly debased. And that which pays dollar returns is going to buy you less over the years than something that uh, is more uh, tied to inflation. The so-called tips or inflation-related bonds are okay, but I, I think your principal may be at some risk. But what are you going to do? I mean, I don't want to tell you you're retired getting Social Security to sell your government bonds and go something else. There are other ways of getting a larger return uh, that is safer, but uh, far be it for me to get some retiree to hang out and get in trouble. I, I'm, I'm much more uh, adventuresome in my investing, and I can do a lot better because of it. But, you know, Bill Gross of uh, PIMCO is the largest bond uh, uh, guru, the largest bond investor in the country, uh, completely pulled out of government bonds, United States government. Mm. He, he just said it's the end it's because they're going down in value because the value of the dollar is going down. All right, you got one more question? We don't have any more. We now have to read about Jesus and give scripture and talk about him. <laughs> well, tomorrow <laughs> we're going to hear from a man who hit one of the biggest home runs in the World Series history. And while he did it, he was high on drugs. And we leave you for these words from Ephesians, be filled with the Spirit, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for being with us. Tomorrow we'll be back, and I may take the great dog Blue back on this program and let you see how he's doing, okay? Okay, Pat. Tomorrow. Okay. Blue. Here at CBN, we see amazing things happen when we stand together. That's why we want to say thank you to the thousands of you who recently pledged to join the 700 Club. Your monthly gift makes it possible to bring crucial help to those who need it most. You help heal the sick, feed the hungry, and preach the gospel across America and throughout the world. You've brought health and hope to people in desperate need. And changed their lives forever. Chen Shu couldn't hear or speak. His parents were too poor to afford the speech therapy he needed. His mother prayed that God would help her little boy. That's when you were the answer to her prayers and provided Chen Chu with the therapy he needed. 
you took him out of a silent prison and gave him hope for the future. So please, watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. This year, millions will know the love and saving power of Jesus Christ. And that only happens because you were there.